Mindanao Railway The Mindanao Railway, previously known as the Trans-Mindanao High Speed Railway, is a proposed intercity rail system in Mindanao, the southernmost major island of the Philippines. Originally proposed in 1936 as part of Manuel L. Quezon's efforts to strengthen the presence of Commonwealth government in Mindanao against the rising influence of Imperial Japan before World War Roman II, the line was shelved. Other proposals and studies were made in the 1950s, 1990s, and the 2000s but never materialized. The current line began development in 2018, with construction set to begin in late 2021. It will be initially built as a single-track standard gauge system to be operated by diesel-powered rolling stock, but will have provisions for upgrading to double-track and electrification through overhead lines. The system will be constructed as a network 1544 KM 959 mile long in its present form, totaling 2278 KM 1415 mile of track, with the centerpiece being a circumferential mainline that connects some of the major cities of the island. An east-west radial mainline shall also be built to the Zambonga Peninsula, and a number of other radial lines will serve as branch lines. As with other projects of the Philippine National Railways, the Mindanao Railway shall be constructed in phases, covering segments of various lengths. The first phase, the Tagum Digos segment of the circumferential main line, will be the first section to be constructed. This segment will be partially opened by 2022, with full operations by 2024. The rest of the 17 segments will be built as part of phases 2 to 10, with a target completion date between 2032 and 2037. History Historical Railways There was historically a series of narrow-gauge railroads opened by the American government in Mindanao. These short lines were constructed to transport supplies and United States Army personnel. A line was opened in Camp Keithley, in what is now Marawi, where trains carry war material on flat cars. A 2FT 610mm gauge short line was also opened in Jolo, Sulu, the best documented system built by the government. The prison was established in 1932 by the American government. It was converted into a facility for American POW after its occupation by Imperial Japanese Army forces in 1942. Devout penal colony survivor Raymond C. Hainbuch wrote in his book that the line suffered from poor condition of the rolling stock and lack of maintenance of the tracks. There was a sole diesel locomotive and 40 flat cars, having replaced a steam locomotive which its tender survived after the war. The locomotive would pair with five or six flat cars that carry prisoners' sacks of rice or forestry product. The train would take a 45-minute trip per way. According to an interview with POW survivor Hayes Bolitho in 2009, the line is estimated to be 7 km 4.3 mile long. He also commented that prisoners were forced to push the train in case of rain or when ascending steep grades due to the poor conditions of the tracks. A few years after the war, a two-car train welcomed the party of then-President Elpidio Quirino during his visit to the area. At the same time, local plantations and lumber mills also built their own systems during the 1920s and the 1930s, typically serving freight trains from the production facilities to a port. At Port Lamin, Surigao del Norte, Trains carry timber from the jungle and sawmill to the pier. One Class Bichet locomotive was used by the Columbugan Lumber and Development Company of Lanao del Norte during the 1920s and the 1930s. In Malabang, Lanao del Sur, a local company also ran freight trains through the town during the 1930s. In Misamis Oriental, the Anakin Lumber Company also operated Haisler locomotives in the town of Jingug during the 1920s and 1930s. These short lines were either destroyed by World War Roman II or dismantled in the case of the Davao Penal Colony Line. Sometime after President Quirino's visit, the line was dismantled due to its condition. The metal used was then sold to the Chinese black market due to the high market value of iron there. 
Despite closures of local freight railroads due to the rise of truck traffic, one line was established in the Davao region by the Tagum Agricultural Development Company, Tedico. It started operations in 1950 and had two diesel locomotives that hauled abeca and Cavendish banana produce. The locomotives were decommissioned and stored in 2010. Initial Proposals Proposals for the Mindanao Railway have been published by the Daily Bulletin and the Far Eastern Review as early as August 1906. These proposed corridors include those surrounding Cotabato, Davao City, Lake Lanao, and Sulu. There were no proposed interconnections between these four lines due to the technology and rather low population density of the region during that time. And President Manuel L. Quezon proposed the construction of an electrified railroad between Cagay and De Oro, then known as Misamis and Davao City, passing through the province of Bukidnon. It would have been electrified by overhead lines powered by the Maria Cristina Falls Hydroelectric Power Plant, now the Agus VI Hydroelectric Plant. This proposal was made on January 1936 and was taken note by Quezon's advisor Francis Burton Harrison. Some track bed construction began the same year, but the project was left incomplete without a single track placed when construction was halted in 1940. After the war, Manila Railroad general manager and later Senator Prospero Sanadet proposed a standard gauge railway in 1952 with consideration for a future electrified network. A network 1170 kilometers, 730 miles long was proposed for construction with the assistance of American firm Deleu, Cather and Company. The following lines were proposed, each at least 100 kilometers, 62 miles long. Davao City to Kibal Bukidnon in the length of this segment is 100 km 62 mi. Kage and De Oro to Kibal the length of this segment is 140 km 87 mi. The route will also pass by Malaybalay. Katabato City to Kibal the length of this segment is 120 km 75 mi. A branch line would have passed by Paring Maguindanao, Nasipit, Agusan del Norte to Santa Josefa, Agusan del Sur, the length of this segment is 120 km 75 mi. A branch line would have passed by Butuan. Butuan to Surigao City, the length of this segment is 100 km 62 mi. Davao City to Santa Josefa, the length of this segment is 110 km 68 mi. Iligan to Kibal, the length of this segment is 110 km 68 mi. A station would have also been built in the area of Dansalan. Makar to Midsayap, Katabata, the length of this segment is 150 km 93 mi. The area referred in this study, as Makar is now divided between General Santos and Tiboli, South Katabata. Javao City to Makar, the length of this segment is 110 km 68 mi. This lake to Santa Josefa, a branch of segment 4, the length of this segment is 50 km 31 mi. According to this older plan, Kiba, then known as Kibawa, and Davao City are the main hubs for the network. Although never realized, it left an influence to the right of way of the present Mindanao Railway proposal, particularly on the circumferential main line. Mindanao and the Philippine National Railway When the Philippine National Railway PNR was created by virtue of Republic Act 4156 in 1964, Establishment of a railway in Mindanao was made part of its mandate. Section 5 of the law explicitly stated that 50M had been allocated for the survey and establishment of a railway on the island. When RA 4156 was superseded by Republic Act 6366 in 1971, the same explicit mandate to create a Mindanao railway under the PNR remained. However, when the law enabling the PNR was amended by Presidential Decree 741 in July 1975, reference to a railway in Mindanao was omitted. Return of the Mindanao Railway to the National Agenda On December 15, 1992, Fidel Ramos signed Memorandum Circular No. 23, which directed the formulation of the medium-term Philippine Deft Plan 1993-1998. Session 4.4, 4, 
two of this plan focused on transportation. Subparagraph M called for a feasibility study for the Mindanao Railway under a build-operate transfer BOT arrangement. From the Mindanao Railway System Task Force to the Mindanao Railway Project Office. Mindanao Strategic Railway Development Plan The government made numerous studies and technical assessments during the 1990s. In the early 2000s, the Mindanao Strategic Railway Development Plan was formulated. The planned railway, with a total length of 1533 km 953 mi, was designed to span the entire island in a loop and was estimated to cost 66.5 billion. The plan for a railway divided into four phases, Laguindingan to Cagayan de Oro, Laguindingan to Iligan, Cagayan de Oro to Tagalone, Misamis Oriental and Iligan to Linamin, Lanao del Norte. The network would have linked urban centers across the island and was aimed to cut the 90-minute travel time by bus between Cagayan de Oro and Iligan to 15 minutes 20 minutes. The project was slated to start construction in 2011 and Saudi Arabia expressed interest in funding the project. The project was later discontinued. 2010s as part of the updated 2011-2016 Philippine Development Plan, 400 million US$85 million was allotted for conducting feasibility studies to develop infrastructure projects such as railways and roads. In 2014, there were debates whether the system shall be privately managed or run by the Philippine National Railways, which at this point intermittently operated intercity rail services in Luzon. The Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, and the National Economic and Development Authority conducted studies for the construction of a rail system in the island of Mindanao, along with its partners, starting in Tuo. The proposal in 2015 resembled the 1952 right-of-way. The government planned to build the railway in six phases, with the first running from Iligan to Jinguk. A pre-proposal conference was conducted in 2015, but the railway was not included in the public-private partnership program. Development The railway in its present form began development in the late 2010s. While JICA was conducting initial studies, then-presidential candidate and later President Rodrigo Duterte supported the construction of the railway. Upon his election, he aimed to begin construction of the first phase between the cities of Tagum and Digos by 2017, and open it partially before his term ends by 2022. In 2018, the project, initially called the Trans Mindanao High Speed Railway, was approved and received initial funding from Congress. However, construction was delayed after several eminent domain issues, specifically after residents of a high end gated community near Davao City has requested the Department of Transportation to realign the railway line to avoid hitting an 18-hole golf course. The railway's route was modified into a system that centers on a circular main line. However, it was later reverted into the old right-of-way, but now incorporating the extensions and branch lines featured in the 2019 proposal. In its current state, the project has 18 segments to be divided into 10 phases. On March 24, 2021, Daughter Undersecretary for Project Implementation in Mindanao, I. Marta J., Tagum Mayor Alan Rillin, and Carmen Mayor Virginia Parandos signed a deed of absolute sale for land to be used, to be used for the construction of the Tagumpay Train Village, a resettlement area for families affected by the project. As of April 2021, land acquisition from Panabo to Carmen is almost complete. On April 19, 2021, the city government of Panabo issued an ordinance prohibiting any unrelated construction on the right-of-way of the Mindanao Railway. The project management consultant contract for the Tagum de Valdigos segment of the project was signed on October 20, 2021. It was also announced that the final length of the system is 1544 km 959 mile long. Construction Construction is yet to begin on the first phase of the Mindanao Railway. On a 2020 interview with the Department of Transportation Daughter Undersecretary for Railways Timothy John Batten, the system is set to begin construction 
in the third quarter of 2021. Partial operations between are targeted to commence by 2022. The rest of the system will be opened between 2032 and 2037. Route The Mindanao Railway is planned to be constructed in 10 phases, with a total of 2278 kilometers 1415 miles of track to be built for the system. Phase 1 will be partially opened between Panabo and Carmen, Davao del Norte by 2022, and full operations are expected by 2024. Phase 1 Also known as the Tagum Davao Digos TDD segment, this involves the construction of a 100 km 62 my segment between the cities of Tagum and Digos, passing through Davao City. It will have eight stations alongside two depots to be located in Tagum and Davao City, with the former being the segment's main yard. This is the only segment confirmed to have planned dental tracking and electrification upgrades in the future. Other proposed phases Phase 2, the second phase, will involve a 150 km 93, my segment south of Phase 1 between the cities of Digos and Coronado, passing through General Santos. Phase 3, the third phase, will involve a 214 km 100 km. Phases 4 and 5, phases 4 and 5 are the last two projects in sealing the new circumferential mainline of the Mindanao Railway, which replaced the Cagayan de Oro Pagadian Digos segment. Coronado Cagayan de Oro segment and Davao City Bukidnan branch the length of this combined main line segment and branch system is yet to be determined. The Davao City Bukidnan branch will meet with the other end of the main line of the Coronado Cagayan de Oro segment at Talacag, Bukidnan, according to the Department of Transportation. This right-of-way is different to the earlier proposals that would have passed by the area of Valencia and Malay-Balay. View to in Cagayan de Oro segment, this will be a 170 km 110 mi between Butuan and Cagayan de Oro. A branch line will be constructed from Butuan and will head north to Surigao City. Phases 6 to 10 phases. 6 to 10 involves the construction of four radial lines with one having an extension into the mainline network. Pagadian will be the main hub of four of these segments and lines. The following branch lines are involved. Cagayan de Oro Pagadian segment, this will be a 216 km 134 my segment between Cagayan de Oro and Pagadian via Iligan. Pagadian Digos segment, this will be a 242 km 150 my segment between Pagadian and Digos, the latter being the southern terminus of phase one. It will also pass through Cotabato City and traverse the circumferential mainline via Cabacan. Pagadian de Palag branch this will be a 122 km 76 my line between Pagadian and de Palag. Pagadian Zamboga segment, this will be a 222 km 138 my line between Pagadian and Zamboga City. Butu and Surigao branch this will be a 97 km 60 my line between Butu and and Surigao City. The total length of the Coronado Cagayan de Oro and Davao City Bukidnan segment, as well as future extensions on the line beyond Phase 10 such as the double tracking of the Tagum Digos segment, amounts to 645 kilometers 401 miles. Design The Mindanao Railway will be initially constructed as a single track line with future upgrades to dual tracking and rail electrification. The right-of-way acquired for the alignment is sufficient for a dual-track system, thus facilitating the upgrade. Timothy John Batten, Department of Transportation Under Secretary for Railways, has said he wanted these upgrades to be implemented at once. Like all proposed intercity lines of the Philippine National Railways, it will be built in 1435 MM4 FT8 1-2 in standard gauge. This is part of the larger efforts by the agency to convert its network from narrow to standard gauge, the first in Southeast Asia to do so. The maximum speed of trains on the line is at 120 km h 75 mph, and the average train speeds along the line is at 77.81. Commuter trains will also have a headway of 13 minutes during partial operations for Phase 1. Lastly, 
The project suggests the use of the European train control system for its signaling and train control systems with at least level 1 to be installed on the line. A section of Phase 1 in Davao City shall also be connected to the Davao People Mover by a connecting bus service. Electrification and Double Tracking The line shall be initially constructed as a single track line that will be by operated with diesel rolling stock, although upgrades to a standard electrified double track main line will be constructed in the future. A specific type of electrification system that will be adopted on the Mindanao Railway is yet to be determined. On the other hand, expansion of the single track line to double track has already been considered for at least the Tagum de Vaudigos section, which is included in the total of 2278 km 1415 my track length of the entire system. For the current station arrangement, however, passing sidings shall be used to allow trains to stop without obstructing traffic from the opposite direction, especially with the target headway being 13 minutes. If the electrification and double tracking plans were adopted, the current 120 km slash H75 MPH maximum speed for the diesel line will be raised to 160 km slash H99 MPH for the electrified line, which is comparable to PNR Luzon system's maximum speed and would count as higher speed rail. The 2016 JICA study suggests the use of overhead catenaries on or before 2045. High Speed Rail In 2018, the project was initially given the marketing title of the Trans Mindanao High Speed Railway. This was later simplified to Mindanao Railway after a maximum speed of 120 km slash H75 MPH has been determined, which is less than half of true high speed rail. The name change also happened with the North-South Commuter Railway in Luzon and the Tel Aviv-Jerusalem Railway in Israel, both of which were marketed as high speed to distinguish themselves from the much slower existing train services there. Despite the change in the project title, there are plans for a genuine high-speed rail network in the region, and the proposed infrastructure of the Mindanao Railway was planned with future high-speed rail development in mind along as with all the proposed railways for PNR. The two shortlisted Chinese proponents also stated interest in designing a high-speed line that will be capable of running speeds of up to 250 km per hour 160 mph once the present pro. Rolling Stock The system is made to accommodate both passenger and freight rolling stock, the latter due to its dual purpose to connect seaports around the island. Only the specifications for the commuter trains for the Tagum Digos section was given as of December 2020. The design speed of the commuter trains is at 130 km slash H81 MPH, although speed will be limited to 120 km slash H75 MPH for passenger trains and 80 km slash H50 MPH for freight trains. The diesel multiple units that will be used in the commuter service are arranged in married pairs and will be combined in the future for arrangement of four and eight car unit train sets. An earlier order also cited the purchase of rolling stock for the intercity section. This order includes 33 DMU cars for the passenger service, which includes six five-car units and three spare cars for passenger trains and four diesel electric locomotives with 15 freight cars. The whereabouts of this order is yet to be determined.